So Samsung's S21 FE came out recently, the fan edition, and the general consensus about this phone has been, you know, it's a good device, but because of the timing of its launch, you shouldn't get it. You should pick up the Pixel 6 instead. It's the, it's the better choice between the two. And I disagree. Like, I can understand from a technical perspective why people would think the Pixel 6 is just like the clearly the better option, right? It's $100 cheaper. That's a big one. Uh, it's also got Google's great camera system. It's got a bit more RAM and it's got, you know, a more premium finish. The materials on it, it's got a glass back, whatever. So people are drawn to the paper specs or the paper features of this device. And you can skin it to make it look like a Ninja Turtle, which is arguably the most important feature of any phone. But Here's my take on this, okay? So I've been using the Pixel 6 as my main phone for ever since it came out. Like I reviewed the Pixel 6 Pro, but then I gave that to my brother and I bought with my own money, a Pixel 6. And it started off as a good phone, a great phone, right? And usually with devices, they start off a certain way, but then they get better with software updates. But for whatever reason, this year, this device has become progressively buggier over the months. So I've had issues with the fingerprint sensor. I had to do a full factory wipe on this thing to be able to get it back up. It was super annoying. Uh, I've had issues with the auto rotate on the screen. Sometimes it won't rotate when you want it to. I've had issues with the adaptive brightness. That's been something that's existed ever since the November update. It's been like, you're out in a sunny day, you're looking at your phone, you're using it, all of a sudden it's like, Boo, and it's dark. And it's like, why is it doing this, dude? And I like adaptive brightness. I ain't one of those people that just put it to max and just like blast my eyes out. I like the adaptive brightness and it is extremely unreliable on this device. And it's now mid-January. It's still busted, it's ridiculous. And then there's Twitter. If I'm in the app and I'm scrolling a little bit too fast, it crashes. It literally quits the app and I have to reload the app. And I just don't use Twitter on this phone anymore. If I'm on Twitter, it's on my iPhone or a computer because it just doesn't work on the Pixel 6. Now, I'm not saying that the Pixel is like, you know, bug ridden and all the other phones aren't. I'm not saying that at all. But for a Pixel device, this is definitely a buggier launch than it has been in the past. And it's not just me, right? Like if you look around, there's definitely other people that have had less than ideal experiences with their Pixel 6 device. And it's just, if you're choosing between the two, I'm just saying it's not as clear cut. It's not just like, oh yeah, go for the Pixel 6 because the technical specs on it are better. Uh, the other thing is materials. So a lot of people are drawing, you know, go for the Pixel 6 because it's got glass and it's just like a better, more premium finish. And again, from a technical perspective and maybe a cost perspective, sure, glass is more expensive and it's a more premium looking or premium feeling device. But dude, on a device at this kind of price point, plastic is just, it's the move. I've said this in other mid-tier reviews and I gotta say it again, plastic is the better option. It's more durable. It doesn't crack as readily. It's just a better choice. Like if you extrapolated three years out from today, right? And you looked at all the Pixel 6 devices out there, so many of them will have shattered glass backs. That's what glass does, right? But how many cracked or shattered S21 FEs do you think there'll be in three years? There'll be some, but there'll be way less because plastic, it don't crack. It's just how it is, right? Actually, that's a lie. If you, you can crack plastic, but it's just way more durable. You get the point. So I like what Google did in terms of providing a premium finished phone at this kind of price point. $600 for a glass back phone of this quality, it's awesome. But it, I don't think it's the right choice for everyone, right? And for the people that are looking at this type of phone, an S21 FE, you want it to last. You want it to be durable and you want it to be, you want it to just not switch phones every year, right? Plastic is king for that type of option. Uh, and the last thing I wanna talk about is pricing. So yeah, on paper, S21 FE is a hundred bucks more than the Pixel 6, right? But the Pixel 6 just does not go on sale. Even on Black Friday, this thing didn't drop down in price. Like you can get bundles and stuff, but this is such a cheap phone for Google that they're not making a ton of money in this thing. They can't, this is not built to go on sale. You know what I'm saying? S21 FE is designed to go on sale and to look more attractive because of sale pricing. It's gonna have carrier incentives. It's gonna have sales. Like even right now, literally the week it launched, you can already get this thing with $100 Amazon gift cards and there's some sizable regional discounts on this phone. It is listed as a $700 phone, but it is not being sold or purchased by people at 700 bucks. So if you are someone who just does not have access to the Pixel 6, like you can't get it in your region, or you just don't have preference for that and you just like Samsung's phones for their software, for whatever reason you like the brand, it's 
it's good. It's a really good phone and all that stuff. We're like, oh, just get the Pixel 6. No, man, I, I just don't think so. Not this year. Last year, I recommended the Pixel 5, or so it was two years ago, I recommended the Pixel 5 over the S20 FE because that's what it was last year. But this year, I'm just calling it how I see it. It is not as obvious of a choice as people are making it out to be. Now, I wanna move this conversation over to the topic of the, I guess, the, the flagships, the Samsung flagship devices. So if you are looking at this stuff, you might be looking at the S21, uh, like the regular S21, and you can get this for, I don't know, like 100, maybe 150 bucks more than the FE because it is a year old at this point, but the FE does get the extra year of software updates just because it came out in 2022 versus 2021 on the original S21. But because of the timing of this launch on the S21 FE, it is actually really close to the launch of the upcoming Samsung flagship, the S22. And I have some thoughts about those phones. So they're gonna be using the new Snapdragon chips, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And I've tested a few phones with that chip, like this being one of them. This is from Realme, the GT2 Pro. Uh, this is actually similarly priced for all this stuff. It's a, if you're adventurous, you can import this thing for a very cheap price. But the chip is a good performer, especially when it comes to graphics, but it uses a lot of juice and it pushes out a ton of heat. So for Samsung to be able to use this new chip in one of their new Galaxy devices, you know, those are thin and elegant. I think they're gonna have to throttle this chip quite aggressively to make it work, but we'll have to see. So S21 FE, I think if you're looking at this year, like I wouldn't wait for the new stuff because it's just, it's a different breed of product. The FE this year is an awesome phone. It has a fantastic screen that gets bright. It's very smooth at 120 Hertz, really solid camera, even in low light and in tougher shooting conditions. And it's seemingly a much less buggy experience than what the Pixel 6 is offering right now. And it's not even any more expensive if you play your cards right. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.